to worship on this 23rd uh, Sunday of Pentecost and a warm greeting and welcome to those of you who are uh, tuning in on our Facebook live feed uh, and then also those who are viewing on our website later. Uh, I want to say thank you to Bev and our bell choir for being here this morning and uh, looking forward to uh, their good music here with us today. Uh, it's also as we uh, approach Veterans Day we're celebrating our veterans uh, in your bulletin, you'll see a list of veterans that uh, have been a part of our own congregation. And so I know we're all celebrating them, but we're also celebrating those who, that we know in our hearts and loved ones who have served this country, uh, this great country as well. So blessed Veterans Day uh, to, to our veterans and to all of you. Our green envelope for the month of November is Food for Friends, and you'll take note that this is, the th I think, the, at least the second or third uh, month for Food for Friends because that's such a really important uh, outreach project that we've done on an annual basis, and we still are short of a few dollars. Uh, if you are participating in the green envelope uh, fund, 
Dean process, I would encourage you to uh, think about giving a little bit more for Food for Friends as we uh, prepare food boxes for uh, families in need this Thanksgiving. Um, I know Greta was uh, here last week. She's here today. Where is she? Oh, there she is. She, there she is. Um, she did an announcement about the Advent uh, Wreath Project, and those uh, uh, supplies are coming into the office. We're getting that organized, and it's going to be a really neat project, uh, especially for those who are at home and feel like you've been distanced from faith formation here uh, at Morningstar. I'd really encourage you to participate in that. Uh, what a wonderful way to uh, really be fed this Advent season. And thanks to Greta for, for sponsoring that. Um, just another note about COVID-19 as numbers continue to rise, unfortunately, in our community. Uh, to please be mindful. And I want to say thank you to our COVID task force, uh, Terry Michaels, who is here especially. And to all of you for uh, really uh, being diligent and uh, coming to worship, but social distancing and, and uh, having safe practices relative to uh, this dangerous virus. It is circling around and uh, we are knowing more and more people in our community that uh, are suffering from COVID. So they are in our prayers this day. Those are all of our announcements as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. For those who are here, I invite you to stand as you're able. And for those who are participating with us online, uh, it's a turn to the bulletin on the first page for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome, and in Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us now live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of God's creation. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer hear their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And be seated, please. First reading is from the prophet Amos, the fifth chapter. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. You are 
my helper and my deliverer, O Lord, do not tarry. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me to turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. seated 
I'd like to invite our children uh, to participate online for our children's sermon. So um, I'm going to ask Pastor Chris to help me because I think it's just been too long since I've gotten to play hide and seek. You know, it's like a common youth activity at a lock-in, and I haven't been able to have one of those with the youth here. So would you play hide and seek with me? Sure. Um, so, what are we seeking? <laughs> um, you'll be the seeker. I'll be the hider. Okay. Um, so just close your eyes and count to 10. All I have to do is close my eyes? Well, you know, yeah. Count to 10? Yes. You trust me not to peek? Yeah. Okay. All right, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand. Is he asleep? Why did he do that? Yeah. That's not how what you happened? play. That's what not happened? how you play hide and seek. What do you mean? What happened? I didn't. What, you, what's going you're on? You're supposed to seek. You got to go find. I was dreaming. <laughs> anyway, that's not how you play hide and seek, is it? No. The person who's the seeker needs to be actively seeking. Um, in our story today, um, I would not say that God is hiding from us, but right, Jesus is no longer physically on the earth in the same way he was. Um, and we, the people, should be actively seeking Jesus in the world in other ways. You know, the Holy Spirit is with us, but we can be actively seeking God while we're waiting for Jesus' return. So there's lots of ways we can do that. We can help feed hungry people, we can stand up to bullies and for our friends that are maybe the underdog. Um, we can keep developing our relationship with God, even though there's not always a physical person to talk to. Um, so there's lots of ways that we can be actively seeking God, but we shouldn't be napping during hide and seek like Pastor Chris. We should be actively looking for God in our lives. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for always being with us, even we don't, when we can't necessarily physically touch you. Help us to find you in the world, to join those things that your hand is moving, to be part of your work as we actively wait for you and share your love. Amen. You have no idea how many people I put to sleep before in the church. Innumerable. I always tell young parents if they have babies, you know, this is the best time to bring them to worship. If you want to have them go to sleep, just wait for the sermon. There was a man once who was strolling on the deck. He went on a cruise. He went on a cruise out in the, out in the ocean. And he was strolling around on the deck and he ran into this gentleman, I think it was an officer, maybe it was a captain, he was in this white uniform at least, he had the yellow braided things on his outfit, his uniform, and so he ran into him and he, he asks him, so, sir, how many people do you have working on this boat? The captain just was kind of incredulous and uh, almost resentful and he barked back, at the man's question, a boat is what you get into when the ship sinks. <laughs> oh, sorry, said the man, but how often do ships like this one sink? Only once. And he scurried away. Now, I've never been on a cruise ship. How many of you have been on a cruise before? So you know what I'm about to say, and you can tell me if I'm accurate or not. But I've heard a lot of people describe their experiences on cruise ships. And in general, they speak about it as just a wonderful experience, an escape, if you will, to get away from all the troubles of the shore, a complete vacation, if you will, from the realities of life. 
And on the ship, you have, what, unlimited food and drink. You have entertainment from wall to wall, from bow to stern. You don't want for much. There's stewards who come in and make your beds in the morning, and if your clothes are dirty, then they take care of that too, and you have fresh linens. There's hardly any work for you to do. There's no preparation. You just float along, and this is what you expect to indulge. You float along without a care in the world, whisked away from the realities of the shore, and this is perfectly fine. You've earned that experience. The problem is when we try to recreate that experience daily in our own lives, that becomes a problem. Someone once quipped, any virtue carried to an extreme becomes a vice. Any virtue carried to an extreme becomes a vice. And I think this is true in a world where we turn inward upon ourselves. We get selfish. We think about our own problems so much that we fall asleep to the realities of the world around us. This is also true, as Greta mentioned in our children's sermon, where we perhaps turn our backs to those who need our help the most, those who are hungry, those who go unnoticed, those who are in pain or perhaps grieving, those who feel like they have no humanity or purpose in their lives. Comfort, consumption, and the stuff of cruise ships might be the aim of our daily lives, our world, our culture that we live in. And yet, when we carry that into a practice daily, what have we gained floating away from the reality of our lives, or reality of our lives of faith in the process? You see, I mentioned this illustration because this is kind of how I feel about those five bridesmaids, the foolish bridesmaids in today's gospel and our parable today. Those maidens not only refuse to do the work of getting their lamps ready, they feel deprived, perhaps even persecuted, because, well, someone didn't do it for them. Today we would refer to this dynamic as a sense of entitlement. Maybe those maidens just thought that they too could float along and everything would just come to them automatically. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, Jesus says. And I think that he says that because they felt like they didn't need to. Maybe they thought that they were being smarter than the other five bridesmaids, that things would just work out in their favor. Remember, they expected the bridegroom to arrive much sooner, didn't they? Why load themselves down with the extra oil to carry around with that heavy burden? Why do that? That doesn't make any sense. So they don't take any extra oil. They expected the bridegroom to be there. That was part of the plan, wasn't it? The problem is, as we hear in this parable, that they all fell asleep. They all fell asleep. And the problem was that they got caught unprepared in their drowsiness. That instead of preparing for that bridegroom to come swooping into the party, they got stuck in the deep, sleepy darkness of themselves. Friends, this parable is no joke. It is a difficult parable for us to hear. It's especially difficult, I think, in the context of our own saved by grace through faith Lutheran theology. I wonder why those foolish bridesmaids can't just be welcomed into the party anyway. Isn't that what we believe? It's also difficult, at least to me, to understand why these wise bridesmaids who had the extra oil on hand wouldn't simply spare some oil for the foolish ones. I kind of wonder about that too. Maybe it's that we just simply can't give our faith away. Yes, we can believe for others. We can 
set the model for others, but we can't just make people believe. We can't just give them that oil. On top of all of this, I wonder why the bridegroom, who obviously represents the return of the Lord himself, why does he come late to the party? And why does he, in his tardiness, come late, but also shut the door to these other bridesmaids? Hmm. And so I wonder, how in the world are we supposed to make sense of this story in the midst of a gracious God, a God who would give his only begotten Son for the sake of his creation? These are really, really good questions for us to wrestle with as we hear this story here this morning. So what does it all mean? Well, I'll try to be brief with my interpretation of the parable. But the foolish bridesmaids, the ones that didn't want to prepare with the extra oil, they represent the wisdom of this world. The wisdom that says, you can do it on your own. You can save yourself. You don't need the bridegroom. By all means, just do what you can to live as comfortably as you possibly can. But remember, remember that the world's wisdom isn't really wisdom at all. It's folly, it's foolishness. And so are the foolish ones who only seek to indulge themselves. The wise bridesmaids, on the other hand, they are the ones that are prepared They bring along that extra supply of oil. They keep their lamps trimmed. They represent the wisdom of faith, the wisdom of God's kingdom. That even though they fall asleep, yes, they do fall asleep in the story, they are still what? They are still ready, and they get up rearing to go to enjoy the party, to have fun. This is the kind of wisdom that trusts in the power of Christ crucified. This is the wisdom of the one who believes and the one who has already freed us from the bondage of sin and has rescued us from death. This is the wisdom of the one who understands that in order to finally, finally enjoy the party, you have to first do what? Die to yourself and to live urgently and daily for the bridegroom to come. This is the wisdom, folks, that teaches us now that being prepared for this bridegroom, no matter when he comes into our lives, perhaps he's here now, it means living in the gift and the hope that we have already been given in the waters of baptism. The best way to, I think, interpret the parable this morning is to read the other scriptures that surround this, this gospel lesson today. And make, mo- no, make no mistake that it's paired with the prophet Amos, it's paired with Paul's letter to the Thessalon- Thessalonians today in our lectionary. The prophet Amos, of course, speaks about what it means to live for the day of the Lord, to let justice rolled down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And for Paul, writing to that church in Thessalonica, there's a community, remember, that's been ravaged by really, really bad things. Early Christians that have been persecuted. Many that have been tortured and have died. And yet Paul urges them to do what? to stay awake, to live in the hope of the resurrection, the promise of the return of the Lord, and to encourage others with this good news. What a gift that is to share in the community. And so just the same it is for Jesus and Matthew's story this morning, who compels each of us, I think, to get over our self-indulging ways and to keep our lamps filled, to keep it filled for others keep our lamps filled full of a faith, full of a hope that the ultimate promises of the kingdom can only be realized through the coming of this bridegroom 
and the very presence of God in our lives this day. This is, friends, how I interpret our parable in the most urgent of ways for our world now. That living by the wisdom of this planet, it just doesn't cut it. It doesn't cut it. As people who have been baptized and claimed by Christ, we can live in a much better way. We can live to a higher level, a higher standard, a higher wisdom than the rest of this world as people of faith. We can live in the inescapable mystery of God's creation and still live daily knowing the gift of His promises for our lives. We do it by keeping our lamps lit. We do it by continuing to share the light of those lamps with our neighbor in all creation. Lutheran pastor, theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who many of you know was imprisoned because of his plot against Hitler during World War II. And he wrote in from prison, letters from prison, he wrote this. We have learned a bit too late in the day that action springs not from thought, but from a readiness for responsibility. Action springs not from thought, but from a readiness for responsibility. And for me, this is where I finally land today and what it means to keep my oil and my lamp filled, my wick trimmed, my oil supply going. To remember that Christ indeed, yes, died for me and for this world. But because of this amazing gift of God's grace and God's love and the hope that we have in this world, that I don't get to just waste this away by not sharing it with others. It's not simply enough, remember, to think about springing into action in this world, but rather being ready to serve because our faith compels us, of course, to do nothing less. For filling our lamps is like filling our very souls, our own heart full of a purpose and power that is sourced in the bridegroom and the Lord himself. This is a difficult parable for a difficult year that we've lived in. COVID is circling around. It seems like it's spiraling closer and closer and closer to home. There's been uncertainty. There's been unrest. Now we've completed an election cycle where nearly half of our U.S. population is politically at odds with the other half of this country. For many of us, we might feel like life itself has just not been going according to the plan, according to our expectations and what we had hoped and dreamed for our lives as we wake up every morning this year. How many of you actually feel like you have some sort of control over everything that's going on in your lives? We might finally ask ourselves, how often do ships like this one sink? Only to be reminded that it sinks only once, one time, and then that's it. It's called life. And Jesus reminds you and I that we too have only one life to live on this earth. That we have only one lamp to keep lit that we have only one bridegroom who welcomes us to the party. That bridegroom has come now. He's come this day. The question is, how will you keep your one lamp of faith lit? And how will you share that light with your neighbor? Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this challenging text, this challenging parable. 
Lord, you remind us how precious the gift of faith is. That in the meantime, between our baptism and the time that we meet you, that you call us not only to faith, but you call us to keep our lamps lit for the sake of this world, for the sake of our neighbors. Help us to appreciate the amazing gift that you give us in your light. Help us to keep our lamps lit for that very reason, so that we might share that light with all creation. In your name we pray. Amen. our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's God's only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. hell. On the the third third day he rose again. again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church on the world and those in need. Let us pray. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you've made. Bless the work of landscapers and architects and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Judge, let justice 
roll down like waters over your creation. Reign over the courtrooms of every land in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. And Lord, we pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit in any way, including for Jean and Eunice, for Ken, for Greg and Janice, for Lindsay, for all of those who have COVID or are suffering from COVID, have lost loved ones due to COVID. And Lord, we pray for those loved ones who we hold now in the silence of our own hearts. Hear us, O God. Holy Protector, be with all of us observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty and service. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who've died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Receive now our prayers in the name of Jesus. Christ our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to turn and to share a sign of that peace with one another. We continue now with our music offering. Be seated, please.
us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number, among us, number us among them that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, that we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life, and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As the Holy Spirit gathers us for worship, we are gathered around the Lord's table. And we are all welcome. At this time, I invite the congregation to please receive communion at your pews. Be seated, please. Thank you. 
congregation to please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and give us peace.
beloved of God, go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.